Hello class 10th. Today we are going to start with the chapter number 1 that is knowing the internet. In this chapter we will cover the following topics that are understanding the internet, how internet works. We will also study about servers and clients. Then understanding URL, understanding domain extensions and we will also study about the different types of internet connection and how we can connect to the internet. So what is internet? Internet refers to the global computer network. It means around the globe all the computers are connected with each other through a network and this network provides a variety of information to the users and different modes of communication so that people can communicate with each other through a network and it uses a standardized communication protocols Pro here protocols means a set of rules that computers have to follow while communicating with each other over a network now let's check some history facts about the internet in 1972 winter surf who was also known as the father of internet was appointed as the head of ARPANET. ARPANET is a form of internet that was created by the US Department of Defense. In 1972, Ray Tomlinson created email for the ARPANET and started using symbol at the rate for the email addresses. And in 1990, ARPANET and NFSNet were combined together to form the internet. So now let's see how internet or web works. There is a diagram given in front of you that shows the working of internet with the different elements. So there are four basic elements you can see in the diagram that are protocol, servers, gateway and client. Protocol is a set of rules that computer use to communicate with each another over the internet. Next we have servers that are the specialized computers that stores most of the information and provide that information to the users. The next we have gateway that is a device that connects the dissimilar networks. The last one we have client that is a computer that retrieves information from the servers and uses resources provided by the server. For example, if you are searching something over the internet, your computer works as a client that requests the information from the server and the servers are the computer that provides the information to you on your web browsers. So our next topic is web pages. A web page is an electronic document that is similar to a web processor document that displays text, graphics and other active elements. When you are viewing a web page, if you look at the address bar of your browser, you will see the name of the page and its location on the internet. Here in this diagram, the address bar is indicated by a red arrow. And web pages are formatted in a computer language called HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. Next we have websites. A website is a collection of related web pages and has a unique web address. It is typically a collection of web pages, graphics and other elements that are linked together to form a larger structured document. All the pages and other elements are placed in a folder on a host server. A website could be of a single page or it may contain thousands of web pages. So let's discuss some topics. First is servers and clients. The computers that make up the web can be connected all the time or they can be connected only periodically. The computers that are connected all the times are typically called as servers and the computers and the smartphones or the other devices that are used to access the internet. They can be connected only periodically 
or maybe all the time that are known as clients the next topic we have web pages everything on the web is based around web pages it is an electronic document similar to a web processor document that displays text graphics or the other active elements the next we have websites a website is typically a collection of web pages graphics and other elements that are linked together to form a larger structured document like an interactive book a website may contain a single page or it may contain thousands of web pages so next topic is url url is actually a link that connects you to a website it stands for uniform resource locator which is a unique address of a folder or a file that is stored on a server and we can access it over a internet here in the diagram you can see url is divided into three parts the first part before the colon it is a scheme the second part is a host and the last part is a path so now let's study about the various portions of the url the first portion of the web address is called the scheme the scheme tells the internet browser what type of protocol it need to be followed http stands for hypertext transfer protocol the second portion of the web address signifies the host typically the host will start with the www so here www.microsoft.com indicates that microsoft is a name of a host here this lets the internet browser know that the site is located on the internet the last portion of the web address is the path that tells the browser about a particular file that it have to access from the domain's file directory domain extensions there are many domain extensions that have different purposes and used by different organizations so here we will study about some of them the first one is .com that is used by commercial organizations or companies that are trying to sell something for example amazon.com flipkart.com and so on the second one is .org that is used by the non profitable organizations third one is .info that typically used for informational websites without any commercial activities fourth one .gov that is used by government organizations and their websites .edu that is used by educational institutions and last one is .in dot in specifies a website that belongs to a country such as cbse.nic.in that belongs to india management of internet here are four different organizations are given that are icann igf w3c and iana that are responsible for the management of internet first one icann stands for internet corporation for assigned names and numbers this organization is responsible for the domains and their connections to the ip addresses second igf internet governance forum was established in 2006 as a forum that runs under the un united nations this this organization provides a platform for the discussions about the directions of the internet on a global level third one w3c world wide web consortium is responsible for keeping the standards in a web protocol development such as html and xml iana is responsible for coordinating ips and registers so now let's discuss some advantages and disadvantages of internet first we will discuss about the advantages number 1 communication you can communicate around the world around the globe with the help of internet through the various modes information you can easily get a variety of information from anywhere in the world while sitting at your home in front of your system 
next is entertainment nowadays internet is the biggest source of entertainment from movies to games to shoppings everything is available in just one click next is social networking through the social networking sites people can uh, form their groups people can communicate with the people people can um, socialize themselves and the various social networking sites are facebook twitter instagram and many more next is e-commerce e-commerce is when people uh, use internet to buy or sell their products or they use it for monetary purposes that is e-commerce e now the most popular e-commerce sites are olx amazon flipkart where people can sell and purchase the things the next advantage of internet is online services there are many online services that are available uh, through internet for example e reservation through which uh, you can book your hotels you can book your um, flight tickets your railway tickets to uh, visit somewhere for your holiday purpose you can use this service the next service we have e education you can get the education with the help of internet and there are many more other services also that internet provides us now the disadvantages the biggest disadvantage of internet is the theft of personal information without knowing any facts people just put their personal information on the internet people share their personal information uh, with the strangers over the internet that that is not safe and that is not recommended by the experts there is a more chance to uh, theft of personal information by the hackers over the internet the next disadvantage is spamming spamming is when companies send you a mails you are receiving the mails from different companies as advertisements uh, what in which you are not interested at all so they just send you the email that goes into the different folder in your uh, mail there is a spam folder that contains all these spamming mails a virus threat the next last disadvantage is virus threat virus threat when companies send you these spamming mails and without knowing without checking it without scanning it you just open it there may be a chance that you get a virus threat through these mails or when you share your information without scanning without <coughs> checking the information you just get information from somewhere somewhere else through the pen drive through the cd and you save that information in your system there may be a chance that virus can attack your system or attack your devices so you have to be very careful with all these disadvantages that do not share your personal information over the internet do not open any mail without scanning it or any file without scanning it do not uh, install any software any application in your devices without scanning here are the some requirements that we need to use the internet so four basic requirements we need four basic elements we need to work on internet first is personal computer second is modem third is internet connection and browser software nowadays many companies are providing internet connection so you can get a connection from any of the companies and browser software is a program is an application that you need to install in your system to access the internet for example mozilla firefox google chrome internet explorer and so on modem the modem is used for the conversion of computer information that is in digital form to the analog form and vice versa so that the information can travel through the telephone lines and we can communicate with the other computers the main function of modem is to modulate and demodulate the signals therefore modems are also known as modulators and demodulators types of modems there are three basic types of modem dial up modem dsl modem and cable modem dial up modem is the oldest form of internet connections it uses your phone line to connect to your isp they are slower 
as compared to the other two categories and if you are you talking over the phone you cannot access the internet at the same time on the another hand dsl modem digital subscriber line can provide the fast internet access and they are designed to use with the high speed connections in addition to greater speed dsl provides user to talk on the phone while simultaneously accessing the internet the last one is cable modem it allow your computer to communicate with an internet service provider over a local tv connection and converts the analog signals to digital signals they have a high speed internet and can receive data at about 1.5 mbps that is megabytes per second types of connection provided by the isp there are many types of connections let's check them one by one first we have dial up connection dial up connection needs a dial up modem to connect to the internet and you have to pay for a call each time you dial up they are slow in speed as compared to the other connections second we have broadband connection broadband is made up of two words broad and bandwidth bandwidth refers to the amount of data that a signal or a circuit can carry it is a high speed internet connection and for these type of connections we require dsl modem another type of connection is wireless connection that is known as wifi it refers to a connection that does not use any wire to communicate and transfer the data between the modem and the computer wifi refers to the wireless fidelity next is cellular connections cellular technology or mobile phone technology provides wireless internet access through all the cell phones or using a usb modem into your device the speeds vary depending on the provider but the most common are 3g and 4g speeds in cellular connections next we have cable connection it provide an internet connection through a cable modem and operates over the cable tv lines since the coaxial cable provides a much greater bandwidth over the dial up and dsl telephone lines you can get the faster access cable speeds range from 512k to 20 mbps that is 512 kbps to 20 megabytes per second next we have leased line connections it is also known as direct internet access and level 3 connections it is the secure dedicated and most expensive level of internet connections they use high speed dedicated transmission lines that rented exclusively for 24 into 7 usage these type of connections used by large scale businesses to connect geographically distant offices next is vsat that is very small aperture terminal connection this system provides high speed broadband satellite communications for internet or private network communications vsat is ideal for mining camps vessels at seas satellite news gathering and emergency responders or any application that requires a broadband internet of connections The following picture shows a small slice of the internet with several home computers connected to a server. You can think the browsers as you are using it on your desktop, laptops and other devices that are connected to the ISP server and then ISP server is connected to the world wide web. Here ISP server is a server of the company, internet service provider company which is providing you the services. For example, Airtel, Jio any company that you are using in this picture you can see a slightly larger slice of the internet how the browsers and clients are connected to the host and the isp servers and then to the world wide web now what is browser software 
the most popular web browsers that are used nowadays are Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, Microsoft Internet Explorer, Apple Safari and Opera browser. These browsers are free and available for download and use. Web browsers allow a user to view resources that are stored on a server. Web browser software is the main application or a program that you install in your systems so that you can access the internet. This is all about the chapter that is internet. Now let us revise some points so that you can get the gist of the chapter. So read these points. Here are some more points that consist the gist of the chapter. Please read them thoroughly. So now it's the time to practice your skills. Here you can see some questions that are given in the form of MCQs and then in the next slide uh, you will see some exercises that are given for your practice. Now students you have to do all these exercises in your previous class notebook. You can continue with the previous notebook and these exercises are evaluated when your schools will reopen and marks will be added in your internal assessments. So hope you all will do all these exercises. You can just write the statement and in front of that statement just mention the correct answer. No need to write all the options. You can directly write the correct state correct answer in front of that statement for all the exercises. Here you can see some application based questions. Application based questions are based on a situation. So you have to read the question carefully and suggest the best possible answer according to that given situation. So here answer in brief. The answers of all the exercises are given in the last. You can check your answers and you can also learn these answer in brief as a short definitions. So hope you will understand all these concepts and all these exercises if you have any doubts you can mark it down and we will discuss when the schools will reopen thank you